Hi, welcome to the Regent University video on using Google, Google Scholar, and Google Books for your research. Many of us love Google because it's fast, we're used to using it, and it often brings up relevant results. It seems to predict exactly what we're looking for. It also gives us great current sources from newspapers, magazines, and websites. Many of the resources that come up on Google are free to read or open access. However, there are some downsides to using Google. One is that it's commercial and it will privilege results from companies that have paid for advertising. Another problem is that it can be political and it can privilege certain results based on a political agenda. Still another problem is that you lack privacy on Google and it can track your searches. The biggest problem is that you will have to pay for access to many resources you find. And through our library, you will not have to pay for any resources. Another big problem with Google is that the quality of the sources you bring up will vary. You'll have some good and some bad, and you'll have to learn to evaluate what is good and evaluate what is bad. So here are some tips for how to do that. Let's do a sample search on Google. Say I'm researching the topic social causes of depression, and I put it into my regular Google search. It will give me a summary of some information. And then if I look here, it will tell me what website this came from, mentalhelp.net. So this looks like a website that probably gives brief overviews. One problem with that is that the information will not be very in depth and it will not be original research. Then if I scroll down more, I'll see a helpline for depression, which is not what I need. And then I'll see personalityresearch.org. And that's a website that I'm not familiar with. So I'm going to have to investigate a bit. Then I see a journal article put out by the government and that's probably a good article and probably free to read because the government is publishing it. And then I see journals.sagepub.com here. And that's also a good academic article. However, I'll have to pay for access to it on the internet. So the best thing to do is to take this title and bring it over to the library site and see if we have it. And if we don't currently have it, put in a request through interlibrary loan and they'll get it for you. So remember, don't pay for anything you find on the internet, get it through the library. That is one of the benefits of being a Regent student. I also see the World Health Organization here. And that's another thing that's good about Google is it will bring up interesting websites from prominent organizations. And again, newspapers, magazines, and things like that. And then here I have another one called childmind.org. And I'm not sure about that. So I'd have to click on it and investigate who's the author, who's the sponsor of the website, when was the article published? Does it seem in depth? Does it seem to document sources for the information? Or is it just someone sounding off and sharing opinions? It's okay to look at opinions, but we usually wanna get our opinions from experts or from people in well-known publications or books. So Google has a lot, a lot of mixed bag variation on the quality. Another tip is to try Google Scholar instead of regular Google. So here you see the Google Scholar page. Google Scholar will bring up more academic articles. So let's search our same topic here, social causes of depression. And you see here, these are academic articles for the most part. Now, it doesn't mean that you can trust everything that comes up on Google Scholar. You still have to vet it and make sure it's a real scholarly journal article that's peer reviewed, if that's what your professor requires. You also might need to sort it by date if you need more current articles. <laughs> and you don't have access to everything on here. So notice the first source here shows that we can get a PDF through region. The second source, there's nothing in the margin. So that means we can't access it here. If your computer is already signed into your region account, this may automatically happen where you can see if Regent's library already has the resource. If it's not signed in and you're not seeing icons like this one that says view it at regent.edu or something else that says Regent or a PDF like this, then what you need to do is sign your Google Scholar up to connect with your library account. So here are the instructions for that. Go up to the horizontal drop-down menu called the hamburger menu by some, click on that, Go down to settings, then click on library links. 
<clears throat> notice mine's already signed in to Regent University and Regent University Library. If I also have access to other libraries, maybe my alma mater from my undergrad or a public library, I can search for those and see if I can link those too. So then it will show you everything you have access to automatically without having to go to the library website as well. <clears throat> so notice when it says PDF, that's a really easy way to get to this resource. I can go search over here in this database now for it and I have access to it for free through our library. Another resource is Google Books and just like it sounds, it brings up book results. So let's put in our same search. Books are good because they give you more in-depth information. And this will bring up academic books and popular trade books. So for example, here, this first one looks like an academic book because it's put out by the Institute of Medicine and the National Research Council. It's from 2009. Going down to number three here, this is a bestseller called Lost Connections. It's more of a popular book, not so much academic. However, it was very influential, so it's still worth looking at because many academics responded to it and reviewed it. If you click on it, you can often see a preview of the book that lets you know if you want to use it or not. You might see reviews. So you can see here a little biography of the author so you can tell what kind of expertise he has. And then when this preview loads, I can see in the table of contents whether the chapters are interesting to me. And I can sometimes look at the end of the book at the index and see if the topics that I'm looking for are covered in the book. So this one gives us the cover and then it might give us a sample of some others. So here's a little sample of the text. It gives me all the pages if I click view all. These are all the ones that are a sample and maybe that's all you need. However, usually you need the entire book. So say that I want to get this book, I can take the title over to our library site, see if we have it. If we don't currently have it, I'll just put in a request to, through interlibrary loan. So in summary, Google is useful to find sources, but we don't always have access to them through Google. So then use our library site. And also remember, don't trust everything you read on the internet, but evaluate everything you see. <clears throat>